Okay, you go through the last uh, last I should, uh, five exercise uh, problem here. Um, the number 10 one is out on the end of a video that was posted. So um, that was the um, uh, pension example. So, um, and I had asked people to look at the video, but uh, this one apparently was not on the video, so I wanted to just bring this up. Basically, what we're looking at here is comparing three different scenarios to figure out which one is going to be the most beneficial for us, right? So in scenario one, we're going to issue some bonds with a face uh, value of $100 million. They will mature in 20 years. They look at the market rate of interest for similar bond issues, and as well as what we actually pay. Um, and then the other options are two leases for the um, manufacturing facilities. So we have one where we have 20 annual lease payments of $200,000. And we also have a 20 year lease with 17 annual lease payments beginning on January 1st of 2028. All right, so two of these three options are just total review of what we've done in the past. The second, uh, the lease B liability throws a little bit of a wrench in the works by adding in that deferred annuity concept, right? So um, let's do uh, the right side of the class over here. We'll do the bond. Um, actually, no, we'll all do all of them because I want you all to get, uh, Never mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that back. We're all gonna do all of them. So first of all, everybody take a minute and figure out um, they're asking us what amount would appear at the uh, on the balance sheet for the bonds and the leases. So what liability would we have if we were to issue those bonds? Okay. So go ahead and um, take a look at the bond example. Oh, 
All right, so what is the sticking point? Let's talk about that first bond example, right? What is the sticking point on the bond example that you have to watch out for here? Semi-annual payments. Yep, so there, there's a couple of things, right? Um, we've got the... Um, All right, so one, we've got semi-annual payments, right? Yep. So you need to know, okay, what is the dollar amount of the payment? Um, what is the dollar amount of the payments going to be? Actually, they said 4%, right? Yeah. So 4% is half of the annual rate. They're dividing it by two. So 0 0.04 times 100 million um, so four million dollars for the payment, right? Um, what else do we have to think about here? Beginning on June thirtieth, twenty twenty-five. Oh wait, never mind. Well, that's an important point, though. That tells us whether what type of. So, what do we have here if we have a stream of equal payments? What's it called when we have a stream of equal payments, regardless of when the payments are received. Okay. An annuity, right? So we've got an annuity here. So looking at when the payments come would tell us what? Zero or one. Yeah, it's zero or one, which is essentially, is it an ordinary annuity where the payment's at the end, or if it is an annuity due where the payment is at the beginning, right? So timing of payment. And so what would this be at the end of the period or beginning? Yeah. Well, you have to look at it as of today's date. So today's date is December 31st, 2024. Are we making a payment today? No. So then that would be a um, end of period. So ordinary. Uh, what else do we need to think about here with respect to the valuation of bonds? It's a, like the market rate. Have to do with that. Yeah, the market interest rate. So how do we use the market interest rate in here? Determine the market value. To determine the market value, which is what we want. That's what we're calculating here. We're going to be recording this at the market value. So, um, so when we do our formula, we're calculating the present value here, right? And so we need to know, all right, how are we going to input our interest rate and our N, thinking about how long we have to work? What is Yeah, so we got to take whatever interest rate we're using to determine the market value and divide it by two so that it gives us the amount that, of interest per period. And then we also have to multiply the number of years by two, by uh, two periods per year. So um, that means if we've got a market rate of 9% and it tells us the four and a half uh, percent is the semi-annual rate, we want to use that semi-annual rate here. And then our N would be what? Number of periods as well. 40, right? So 20 years times two per year. So 40 periods. Um, oops, I gotta, let me just remove that. So it's, 
There we go. And then, so our payment we've calculated up above, that's going to be the minus 4 million because that, uh, we're, I'm using minus to show that we're paying that out, right? Is your future value 100 million then? Or do you not have a future? Yeah, yeah. Oh. The future value is what you have to pay at the end, what you're paying out at the end. Um, so we're also going to put that in there as a negative too, because the payments out, or we're paying the interest out periodically and then we're paying the balance due at the end. So 100 million. And then we already determined the end of the period there. Whoops, that's not right. Four point five percent. Forty periods. Make sure I got the right rate. The number of periods. What did I do there? I did. Hold on. Make sure I got the so end of period. Okay, that's right. And then oh, I didn't put. What did I screw up here? All right, I can see it. What did I screw up here? Uh, no negative 100 million. Yeah, I didn't put those in the same direction. I, I After all that talking about it, I didn't put the negative sign in there. So, um, all right, so there we go. 50 million just didn't feel right, right? Okay, so that's um, where we would be looking at for that bond one. Then. Can you go back to that for me real quick? Yeah. Okay, so looking at the next one, then we've got a lease example. The lease has 20 annual lease payments of $200,000. Um, that's oh, okay. So the first one is bonds. All right, these are all unrelated. Okay, I was like, wait, the amount of money seems so small. That's because it's a totally different item. Unrelated. Okay, so looking at lease A, we're basically what what type of a situation do we have here for lease A? Would it be a future value? Uh, no, because we're recording it based on what we want to have it valued at today. So these are all going to be present values. But 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 like what type of a what you're doing good. That's okay. No, you're doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> Answer, he said, he muttered, I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as a bad question. The only bad question is the one that you don't ask and you don't know the answer to. Um, Got to get the answers one way or another, right? Okay. Um, and, even, and if you don't know the answer, then you really need to ask, right? So there you go. Um, all right, so we've got a stream of 20 annual lease payments that are equal. What is that? It's an annuity, right? Okay, and we have to pay beginning on January 1st of 2025. Um, today is the day before that. So what are we looking at here? What type of annuity? Annuity due or ordinary? Annuity due, right? We're paying it like imminently, so we'll call it. All right, so um, present value. Um, Do not know what our oh hold on did they give us anything about um that's what they oh, 10%. oh oh okay so thank you at the bottom of the paragraph 10 percent um number of periods was 20 payment is 200 thousand future value is what zero zero right we don't have to pay anything at the end and we're looking at, we already determined the beginning of the period because it's an annuity due. So that's what I came up with. Is that what you all came up with? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Here's the fun one. And by fun, I mean fun in quotes. Fun. Um, <laughs> All right, we've got lease B for 20 years, beginning in January 1st of 2025, so tomorrow. 
Lease requires 17 annual lease payments of 200,000 beginning on January 1st, 2028. So what do we have going on here then? Um, it's an annuity due that's deferred for three years. Yeah, we got an annuity. Well, there's you can either do it as an ordinary annuity that is deferred for two years or an annuity due that's deferred for three years, either way. Um, there's two ways you can slice this apart. Regardless, we've got a timeline here where we've got an amount of time before no with no payments, uh, multiple periods, right? Either two or three, depending on how you look at it. And then we've got a stream of 17 payments. So how do we how would we break that up then? If you were me, how would you break this up? into two separate problems that you easily know how to solve. Yeah. Find the present value at the two year mark um, of the annuity and then, or of the payments and then find the present value of two years prior to that. Yeah, exactly. So calculate this present value first. And then when you get that fixed amount, do the present value of that present value. So, um, okay, so 17 annual lease payments beginning on January 1st of 2028, and we're basically at 2025. So we can either do an ordinary annuity uh, deferred for two years or an annuity due for 28. Let's just do the annuity due for 28 because that seems a little more intuitive to do it based on when we start. Okay, so the for the first part, I'm just noting that because it's easy to get so wrapped up in calculating the first part that you're like, ta-da, and then you forget to do the second part. So we'll just write down that we have two parts to do. All right, so we take a present value and we have the 10 per, same 10% rate. Um, and we have how many periods? We have 17 payments, right? 17 payments. Um, no, sorry, sorry. Um, yep, 17 payments of 220,000. Make a negative there so I don't forget. Um, no lump sum at the end or future value. And then because we're doing this starting like today's the payment on the 28th, then we'll do the beginning of the period. So that's our initial part that the present value here, all right? Now we're going to do the present value, take this lump sum and value that back for how many periods? Three. Three, right? Because 2028 20, back to, to 27, 26, 25. So three periods. Again, 10%, three periods, no payment on this one because there's nothing in the middle. We're just taking the one lump sum. Um, the future value, the present value from the first one becomes our future value here, which is the 1941, 215.9, or you can put it in a code and say, uh, for me, B32, just plug B32 into there, whatever it is. Um, and then we're doing end of the period here, because it's just like a normal one here. Oops, did I do my, didn't do my, I'll just do this this way because I want to make sure they're both going in the same direction here. But. Okay, so. All right, that, that looks. Everybody good? Everybody good? Yep. All right. So basically, I'm just showing what the formulas were here. We go. Anybody have any questions on that? Okay. And as far as like the, you know, annuity due and then whether you're calculating a present value or a future value, I drawing out a timeline can be super helpful for that. Just um, looking at what direction you're making your calculation to, where do you know what the number is? If you know what the number is at the end, then that clues you in that you want to calculate for the number at the beginning and so on and so forth. Okay. 
All right, so that's problem number 11. That's the last one. Problem number 10, there's a short video out there for those uh, pensions. Yes. Okay, I got a quick question on uh, the second part of the lease B liability. Yep. So we used uh, one for the type in the first part. Why wouldn't we use one for the second part? Because um, it's just an ordinary present value calculation. There's no intermediate payments. So, yeah. So it's going to be like two full years of, because we want two, or I'm sorry, three full years of discounting back. If we had put um, beginning of the period, it would adjust the number of periods. So it's just, yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. Any other questions on that? All right. With that, then let's take a couple minutes and look at the. Um, Uh, uh, uh. Let's just take a couple minutes and look at the look through the target case really quick. Okay, so for this one, we're preparing some financial statements. We've got some disclosure notes and um, notes looking at, oh, we got to double click through here to get to the end report. Um, refer to disclosure note 17, find the schedule showing the lease payments. What are the total lease payments for operating and finance leases? What are the present values of those lease payments for each type of lease? And then um, basically it's just navigating a uh, the report here. Yeah. Either way they make you download it. So you might as well just download it. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so if we scroll through. Um, I'm gonna do this. Um, specifically for the 2019 one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yes, you're in January 2020 and 2019. No, I think it's just 2019. I think 2019 has, um, I couldn't find anything on 2020. So February 1st, oh, you're right. February 1st, 2020 is the 2019 report. That's right. Yeah. The answer is also 2020 because they have a breakdown. The first seven years were. So you could yeah. find it either way. But, but yeah. I don't so think the, it's the 2019 one you would want to look at. Um, because I had the presented right when I asked you, I was like, Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. All right, so hopefully you all are doing the same thing I'm doing right now. Oh my gosh. No, I did not want that. One to 17, right? They said. Yep. Oh, I think it's not working here. Not cool.
It is not like you fucking like that is the world's most toxic. Like you said 55. Okay. All right. So we've got our lease. Oh, they and they have our lease terms and discount rates here too. So this this um Total lease payments, total future minimum lease payments. You can just pull that um, from the two, right? For operating leases is what, 3205 and 1890 less interest. All right. So, um, Got that part going. Next question they're asking, what are the weighted average discount rates? So they've got that right out here for operating and finance as of this period. So which one should I be looking at here? We're looking at February 1st, 2020. What number am I grabbing off of here? 3.71. Yeah, the 3.71, and then we've got 4.23. And then did they report their lease liabilities for the total amount of the lease payments or the present value? Present value. Present value, right? They're, you're always gonna be reporting the, the present value. Okay. All right, boom, target case done. Let's go out to the Kahoot. That's what we're, I know it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, okay. 